What's up guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to download and process blocks and then filter for your own transactions using the What's On Chain API. Let's get into it. In this tutorial, I'm going to be implementing the API in a simple HTML page. The reason is to take advantage of the native Fetch API so we don't need any external libraries. Going out to the What's On Chain API documentation, you can see that we can make an HTTP request to get either by block hash or block height. Now this would be much more simple except in order to make the API scalable, What's On Chain implemented pagination in the API, which only returns 20 transactions at a time if the block is a certain height, I mean sorry, has a certain amount of transactions, which is over a thousand. Turns out on BSV, this is a regular occurrence with where the blocks sometimes are half a gig or multiple gigabytes. So we're going to have to implement this, which is the nuance to this. So let's go ahead and get started. In the code here, we're going to implement a single function called get block. We'll make it asynchronous and we'll take two parameters, height and hash. And I'll explain the hash part later, but we'll start with the height. So here, we're going to want to make, if we supply the height, we're going to want to make a call to the height endpoint. So let's declare our response variable and then we'll do const, sorry, if height, then res equals await fetch. And we'll use back ticks so I can take advantage of template strings. And I'm going to want to copy this endpoint here, this URL. So I'll paste that in. I want to supply replace this network with main and then the height I'll use with our parameter. So I could do a second line of code here to get the JSON part of the response, but I'm going to do a little technique, which is to chain these await calls together. So I can surround this with parentheses and then do jot JSON in order to avoid a second line of code. And here I'll just log the response. So up here, I already have my page open, but I need to get a block height so that we can call against. So I'll take the latest one, which, and this call should scale even though that block is uh, over 100 megabytes because of the pagination I mentioned at the beginning. So we've got this and we're going to make our call. So let's refresh and here's our res. And you can see we got the hash, the Coinbase information, how many confirmations, who mined it, the previous block hash and see there's our transactions. So it's only going to return a hundred transactions if the block has greater than a thousand, which is, you know, that's, that's how all the blocks are at this point. Occasionally we'll see less than, but we need to implement that pagination I talked about. But the first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and populate an array with all these transactions because the, to actually get the hexes, that's a separate endpoint. So again, they made this API scalable. In order to, if they were returning all these hexes, that would be huge payloads and that could take down their server and probably cause the client application lots of issues. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, but it, it can be done. So let's do that in the next part. So let's go ahead and get those 100 transactions. So let's add a TX array here and we'll just make that blank. So down here, we want to process those. So we can do res.tx.4 each. And then for each one, we can do tx.push t. So for each of these, we're going to push those inside of an array. And then we should have that, all that inside this tx one. So let's just make sure that's working here. So let's refresh. And yep, there it is. So I have a, an array that's going to have, and we're going to end up putting all the transactions inside of here so that we can iterate through that in order to get the raw hexes for each of one, each of these transactions. Okay, so I mentioned the hash part. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do else if hash is supplied and it's gonna be the same code here, but let me go ahead and get that. So get by hash, let's grab this URL and we'll do res equals, actually I can just copy this. So paste that in and then I'll just replace this here with that for the hash. We say main and then we can use our template string with hash. 
And that'll come in handy later. I'll demonstrate why we're doing that. Okay, and let's get rid of this. Okay. Now let's take a look at how the pages looks in the response. So if going back to here, if I open this up, we can see this pages. And it returns a URL, basically uh, sub URLs of what we what endpoint we need to hit in order to get the next page of transactions. So we're going to need to take this and append it to an endpoint and make a call to that to get the next what however many transactions. And then we want to populate those into our array. So for each page URI here, I'm going to need to make another fetch call. So here I can just make a condition. So if res.pages, I want to do optional chaining here, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But I want this condition to exit if there's no pages. So if we have pages, we can go ahead and say const pages equals res.pages. And let's take a look at this again. Dot URI to populate that array. And then for let, sorry, let P of pages we want to make a fetch call. So const res equals await. And I'll do that technique I did before. Await fetch. Do the back ticks and just add that JSON right there. And I want the first part of this URL. So you can see that this this API call is going to be very similar to the block one. As you see, it starts with that slash block. So I can just put that there and then add the PN. So when we get this response, we should get the remaining transactions. So let's log this. Console log res. And we can see this. And I'll comment this one out. So let's refresh. And there we get 43, around 4,300 TX IDs. And you see the list there, which for that block height is plus the 100 in the initial API call brings us to around 4,400. All right, so now let's iterate through the, the through this response and add it to our TX array. So res dot for each T, we'll just do TX dot push T. And then at the end here, let's log our TX array and then I can get rid of that and now we should see the full amount in here if we do this refresh here yep and there we go so we have the 4400 and which matches the amount in the last block here so next we're going to want to get the raw hexes for each of these transactions so what's on chain has another API called the bulk raw trans transaction data endpoint and you can see here it's a max 20 transactions per request. So we're going to need to do some for looping and some math to get the remainders here in order to make calls for each set of 20. So you can see here we've got to pass in a body of TX IDs. Ideally, we would just be able to pass this whole one and get everything back, but that would be a huge payload and it wouldn't scale properly, especially with colossal blocks, right? So this one scales because we make... Uh, continuously make small requests and you can see here we get the hex in the response so let's go ahead and do that so let's prepare the logic to do the pagination for the hex endpoints so first thing I want to do is get the amount of times we're going to need to loop so we'll do const loop times and we'll make that tx dot length divided by 20 and let's surround this with parsent we need an integer value here. Alright, so this will be the amount of times that we need to loop. And then we want to get the remainder of the tx.length on 20. So we'll do the modulus function, and this will get how many times we need to, how many transactions we need to get in our final call. So this loop times will give us the, uh, the amount to get us the first however many divisible by 20, and then we'll need one last time to get the remainder. Now let's log these so we can kind of make sure that this is correct. So loop times and then remainder. All right, and let's refresh here. So we need to loop 221 times, and then that final call, of course, is going to be three since that's the remainder. 
Now I want to add some more variables here. So I'm going to need one to count our transactions as we go. So I'll do let x, we'll just say is zero, because I'm going to want to count the ones inside of this array. And then I want two arrays to stage. So I'll do temp, make that a blank array, and then tx object, which is going to be our final array that has the matching transaction hash with its hex. So the approach here is going to be to get 20 transactions at a time and stage them in this temp array and then make a fetch post call to the hex endpoint to receive those back. So first let's make a for loop to iterate the amount of loop time. So let i equals zero i less than the loop times and then increment that. So we're going to want to populate the first 20 into this temp one. So for let j equals sorry, 0, j less than 20, j plus plus, we'll populate this temp array here. So temp.push tx x. So that's going to be this one right here, and we want to iter increment that each time. So that way we get the first 20, then the next 20, then the next 20, and so on, right? So, and then the next part is we do the fetch call with this because it'll break out of here once it gets the first 20. Let's implement the post request. So I want to do const res equals await, await, fetch. And let's grab the endpoint from the docs here. I'll copy this, paste that in. We need to change this to main and then dot JSON afterwards. But here we need to specify it's a post request. And then for the body, we do JSON.stringify. This is the interesting thing in the fetch API. And inside of here, I want to do TXIDs temp and then let's log this to the console so per the docs we want to specify the txids and we'll pass in that temp array here so let's go ahead and run this let's refresh here and we should start seeing these pop in it might take a while but yeah there we go so we we see that we get our arrays here and we're we're doing a plus so uh, you see it gave me a 404 because I gave it more than 40 for the subsequent call. So um, what I need to do here is clear out the temp. So if I do that now, this should work. And it's a little slow, but it does work. It does end up syncing, so you can see it's passing those now. So let me comment this so we can stop that. Let me uncomment this and run it again so we can take a look at the response here. So we're going to need to filter on these hexes because we don't want everything from these blocks because that would that obviously be huge. But we can do some filtering here like kind of like I did in another tutorial I did on this SOC server sent events endpoint that What's On Chain has where you can get notified of the hexes as they come in but you only want to filter on the ones you care about as opposed to getting the fire hose. So we can use a couple of uh, strings here to compare against this hex to only process the ones we care about. So in this example, let's do, let's do a hex to string converter here and let's do sensible transactions since that's the hot topic here. So I can take this hex string and I'm gonna say, okay, only ones that contain this pattern am I going to put into my array? So let's go ahead and do that. So down here we can say res dot for each since just to compare here we can see what's going on. We get an object that contains the hex. So res dot for each t and we'll process this if t dot hex dot includes that hex pattern which is sens sensible contract transactions we'll want to populate that TX obj with that. So we'll do, actually we'll just make an array here. TX ID T dot, let's confirm the field name, it is TX ID dot TX ID and then hex T 
t.hex. And then once we're done, let's log the tx.obj to confirm that we're getting what we want. And this should be building in size over time if that block actually has sensible transactions. So let's run this. So again, it'll also be kind of slow to process, but yeah, there weren't any in that one. Maybe this block doesn't have any. Okay, so there's one. So if I take this TX ID here, oops, not the hex, and then we go to what's on chain, remove the quotes, we can see, yes, this is definitely a sensible because the scripts are pretty big, right? So you can see that it contains that in the script. So that's how we filter for our own, and it could be any pattern that you can think you guys can think of. All right, so that's going to populate our TX object with the ones we care about. Next here, we need to get the remainder that our initial logic here will not populate. So we're going to need to implement a kind of a funky for loop here. So first, I'll clear the temp array since we'll use that for our staging again, and then we'll do for let k. We'll set this to be equal to that tx array that has all of the transactions minus one because it's the array indexing is off by one and while k is greater than tx dot length minus the remainder so we'll loop down to whatever the remainder is and then k we need to decrement it so for each of these we want to uh, populate the temp array with from the tx is one that we got initially so temp dot push tx k and then at the end of this we should be able to see so console log and confirm that we're actually getting those last few transactions so to demonstrate let's comment out this for loop here and then let's come up here and refresh so you can see we got the array of only two so, so this should be greater than equal to. Sorry about that. So we refresh and now we get the three. And we could confirm that they are indeed the last three by checking this here. So you can see that these hashes match. So for each one, 377 and then B308. All right. So next we'll want to get, we're going to want to make an identical fetch call for these last few transactions to get their hexes so we can do the same filtering. Now, this probably should be a function, but for brevity of this tutorial, it's already getting kind of long, I'll just re-implement the same logic and I'll just change this to be remainder res instead. And let's fix the, shift all this over. We'll just rename this so we don't get the duplicates. And then at the end here, our tx.obj will have everything that was a sensible transaction inside of here. So let's prove that out. So after all this looping is done. Yeah, so I'm just confirming here. All right, so let's refresh this. And it, it, yes, it'll take a while, but it will end up syncing. So it's processing these by 20 and checking, okay, do we have a sensible transaction? And we should see this array, this TX object increase as it finds more sensible. And by the end, it'll just be everything that we found in the whole block, including that remainder. So lastly, I want to implement recursion. So in case we want to sync from a certain block height, that's the reason I implemented the hash because the response is going to have a field called next block hash if there's more to process. So what we can do is just simply call this get block inside of itself, which is recursive. Make, don't supply a height, that way it hits this and gets the, res the same response back and we want to do the same logic. So, you know, obviously this wouldn't be used in production, but I'm going to move my TX obj up here in an array. And I'm not going to make you guys sit through this logic, but instead of, so down here, instead of blanking that out, we'll just have it initially blank. And then as, to, as it processes, it will populate this. So at the end here, we can just say, if res.next block hash, we 
can do await get block null and then res.next block hash. And if so, it'll continue to process and add to this TX object array from this block height. So, like I said, I'm not going to make you guys wait through that. But at the end, you're going to have, from whatever block height, you're going to have all the transactions, only the ones that you care about based off this hex filtering technique. So, I know this has been an issue for a lot of people lately due to some services being in flux. But this, you know, it's not optimal because it is quite slow. But it is scalable because it only returns piecemeal transactions back to you. And this will process and sync to the current height. Yes, it will take a while, but at least you will end up getting the transactions. Again, in the other tutorial I did on the service and events, if you combine the two, you don't necessarily need to get, be in sync with the blockchain if you're listening real time because you're going to keep getting those transactions and you'll kind of be in sync anyways. All right, so let me know of any feedback in the comments. I'm glad to be back doing these tutorials. Be on the lookout for more. See you guys in the next one. Bye.